the fifth edition of the American Psychiatric Association's Diagnostic and Statistical Manual describes several traits associated with narcissistic personality disorder. They include a grandiose view of oneself, problems with empathy, a sense of entitlement, and a need for admiration or attention. What makes these traits a true personality disorder is that they take over people's lives and cause significant problems. Imagine that instead of caring for your spouse or children, you use them as a source of attention or admiration. Or imagine that instead of seeking constructive feedback about your performance, you instead told everyone who tried to help you that they were wrong. <laughs> what is that? What I think I'm going to have to do, let's see here. I am going to have to, sadly, guys, turn on followers-only mode for a bit. And the reason I say that I'm going to do this right now um, is sadly because we had a lot of trolls earlier. A lot of fucking trolls. Annoying levels of trolls. And... At least this way, uh, they won't be able to spam the chat with stupid shit, okay? And I apologize for that. Obviously, I can't control it. The mods, you know, Swaggins was here. He was trying to keep it under control. And it's hard when, you know, I'm trying to focus on a new game plus interact with you guys. And every time I look at the chat, it was like trolling, trolling, trolling. And I'm like, sucks, right? But that's life, I guess. So I, followers only mode is on. There's not much we could do about that, okay? Um, if it continues, you know, what else can you do, you know, besides just you try to keep an eye on it, right? Alrighty, everybody. Hold on to your butts, get ready. Raging Boner! Huh? Like, that doesn't even make logical sense. Now, next week, all right, next week, before the launch of Smash Ultimate, which is basically the final major release I'll be covering this year, I want to do my Indies Marathon. Okay, if you're not aware, the Indies Marathon is going to be at least four games, if not more, um, that will be played during a marathon-style event. And uh, it's going to be taking place more than likely a day or two before the launch of Smash. Okay? Should be fun. Every time I do an Indies Marathon, it ends up being entertaining. And sometimes, some of the games that I play during these marathons end up being so interesting to me that I end up going back to them and doing, like, full playthroughs of them later. I would not be surprised if maybe this happens this time as well. Okay? <laughs> so, that being said, um, it should be fun. I am definitely looking forward to that. That's going to be sometime next week, okay? Not this week, but sometime next week before the release of Smash. Also, I have a Teespring store, everybody. At my Teespring store, I sell all kinds of merch, including t-shirts, hoodies, mugs, stickers, and the like. And this is great quality stuff, I can attest, because I own a ton of it myself. In the year and a half that I've been using Teespring, I've got nothing but positive things to say. All the stuff I ever got was great quality stuff. Um, I just launched my Christmas line of products, so the holidays, plus my 10-year anniversary line of product to celebrate a decade as a content creator is live there, plus all the old tried-and-true designs that have been there for, you know, over a year are on there. Give it a look. Oh my god. Ultimately, it is going to end up in the landfill. And you guys also, uh, you know, get a really high-quality collectible. Just to, just to throw this out there, I select the higher quality of shirt. I don't pick the base level shirt that makes me more money. I actually forego profit in order to make sure that you guys get the better quality shirts. Because I want you to have a better quality shirt. I don't want you to have a piece of crap that's going to fall apart, right? Ah! No! 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 Something that feels rough or whatever. I get the, the higher quality Hanes shirts that are the stretchier, premium quality fabric. So. Please don't tell me about negative shit that's happening all over the internet. Like, you know, not on my stream here. I don't care about the next person who's insulted me. The next person who is illegally stealing my content. The person who's doing this and that. That's just schoolyard shit. Drama shit. I don't care about it. DSP is a pedophile. DSP is a thief. DSP is a greedy fuck. DSP is this and that. They're sitting here and they're analyzing every little thing that I possibly say. I would never be in the situation I'm in right now financially if it weren't for the trolls completely destroying my YouTube uh, business. They're idiots. <laughs> 
I just want to stay here focused positively on my stream, all right? To start off today's cheering, we had... It's sick, it's piss. Uh... <laughs> He did a 100-bit cheer, and he did some kind of a memeing message that I'm not going to read. But anyway, Poopy Poop Gaming USA has resubscribed for the fifth month in a row. <laughs> and, uh, my, my laptop trying to get to react. Okay, there we go. Wow, it was locked up. I couldn't get it to move my Muxy leaderboard here. King of Hypocrisy has cheered 50 bits and says, You previously said ad revenue has been steadily declining on YouTube over the years. Was this a natural process to YouTube's bad business practices or because of people like PewDiePie generating negative press for YouTube and causing them to lose advertisers? Um, I have to put most of the blame on YouTube shoulders. Even though, yes, when you have the top YouTuber out there getting into trouble for saying stupid shit on stream, um, I cannot put the blame on PewDiePie. I would not do that. Even if the fact that I don't like the content the guy puts out, um, you know, I, it doesn't mean that I think that he's responsible at all in any way. I don't think so. I think what happened is very simple. YouTube just thought, oh, our website's so popular, it'll run itself. We don't have to put effort into this. We'll just run bots to do everything. So they had bots auto-assign ads to any old video, and you had advertisers coming in paying big, big money to get their products advertised on YouTube. And sadly, what ended up happening was advertisers saw these ads were no longer effective. It, you, know, you have ads running on, you know, here's a video. It's a gameplay video meant for kids. And the ads on the video are cars, life insurance. Uh, you see what I mean? And, and so advertisers are like, this is an ineffective advertising. What's happening is you're just, just putting our ads and throwing it on any kind of video. And basically our advertisement dollars are being wasted because your, your automated system doesn't actually target our audience. So why are we going to keep using your website? Then, of course, we had the big blow up where YouTube was, was putting advertisements on videos that were supporting terrorism and shit like that. And it just got worse and worse. So when you had wave after wave of major company who thought that YouTube would be effective advertising, but then when they actually tried it and just looked at the evidence and said, we got no, no benefit from advertising on YouTube because they just throw our fucking ads on any old video. Uh, you know, this isn't even our target audience. So why on earth would we want to continue advertising on YouTube? And so they stopped. They pulled their ads. You know, companies like Starbucks and Walmart and other, said, fuck this, we're not going to advertise on YouTube anymore. And they pulled all their advertisements and YouTube, instead of actually saying, okay, I think we, we now realize our al algorithms don't work. As a business now, we're going to have to step up, hire actual humans to intelligently figure out how to actually fix this problem. And said they said, let's write more algorithms. Yeah. Ultimate laziness. They said, let's just write more fucking algorithms. Because the algorithms helped the first time. We'll write more. So they did. And it didn't help. You know, advertisements still went on crap content. Then you got guys going out there like Logan Paul filming suicidal, you know, forests and stuff. And it just gets worse and worse. You know what I mean? When YouTube becomes a cesspool where only toxic style content is promoted and watched and then advertisements get onto said content, what did you expect was going to happen? You know what I mean? They're all the, the positive, productive stuff that should be going on on the website. Instead, it, it, it just turns into toxic garbage and advertisers don't want anything to do with that. You know? The biggest stuff on YouTube these days is toxic content. And it sucks because how are you going to advertise on that, right? So when the, the major focus of your website is people to coming to be negative and nasty and, and do rumors and drama and be toxic to each other, why would an advertiser want to be associated with that? And sadly, those of us who've been on YouTube for a long time and strive to put out productive content are struggling because of the, all the actions of YouTube as a company to basically just automate everything and put no fucking effort into their own business. And it's just that simple. The, the management of YouTube is terrible. The people in positions of power at YouTube have no concept of how to run their business, don't understand the culture, and don't see firsthand what's going on with their website because they ignore it. Instead of actually listening to what people have to say about the website, they put their fingers in their ears and go, Neener, neener, neener. 
until something majorly bad happens so bad, like the Logan Paul incident or channels completely being demonetized for no reason. You know, then all of a sudden they'll still, oh, it's a crisis and we'll listen. But outside of that, they just do whatever they want and no one really benefits. Uh, and they've always been like this as a company. Okay. They always have been, they just don't listen. They ask for feedback, you give it to them and they don't change anything. They just keep going along thinking they know better than everybody else. And the company has declined and declined and declined. YouTube now is a terrible place to be a content creator, being very honest. From someone who's been doing it since 2008, YouTube is a horrendous place to be a content creator. They allow people to regularly do disgusting things and don't care. So, you know, that shit doesn't fly here on on Twitch. They just don't it does not fly here. They will not let you do put up that do that kind of shit here. But YouTube just doesn't care, you know. <clears throat> but anyway, no, absolutely not. Under no circumstance would I blame uh PewDiePie or someone like that. It's YouTube's fault. Ultimately, if YouTube didn't allow the toxic shit to become the prominent thing on their website, if it didn't promote the toxic content, if it didn't put advertisements on the toxic content, then, you know, the website wouldn't be where it is. But they did. But through their own laziness and mismanagement, that's what the business has become. It's their, their fault and no one else's. La 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 la. La la la. La 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 la. La 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 la. La la la. La la la.